Uh, welcome everybody, this is Mr. Nda Visitor once again and this time we will be looking at chemistry the mole of reactant required in a chemical reaction. So this is the stoichiometry part and uh, much of our attention will be required and we need to understand the concept of balancing of a chemical reaction because of the stoichiometric factors that will um, play a pivotal role in this. So suppose we want the moles of a reactant required in a reaction. So this is exactly what we will be looking at. So we want to calculate the moles of a reactant that are required in a reaction. So this is exactly what we want to do. Let me just zoom in a bit. Very good. So how do we go about doing this? That is the question. Now suppose a question comes and says, how many moles of iodine gas are required to react with 0 0.429 moles of aluminium according to an equation? So remember the question says how many moles of iodine gas are required to react with 0 0.429 mole of aluminium. And then the first thing that we need to do is to write down a chemical reaction. So meaning um, aluminium react with iodine gas and the reaction will give us aluminium iodide. So this is what we have, right, uh, sorry, uh, this is supposed to be a 3, right, so we have aluminium that reacts with iodine to give us AlI3, very good. So now the question is how many moles of I2, now the first thing that we need to do here is to balance the chemical reaction. So I have one aluminium, that is fine, one aluminium, aluminium is balanced. I have two iodine, three iodine, there's a problem. In order to balance iodine, I need to multiply here by two. Because two times three will give me six, and I can multiply there by three. Three times two is six. 2 times 3 is 6, so iodine is balanced. But now I have 2 aluminium. Remember this 2 multiplies here and also there. We dealt with this when we looked at um, ionic uh, reaction. So you might want to go and look into that. Many problems were dealt with when it comes to balancing of a chemical reaction. So I have now 2 aluminiums. I can just put a 2 there. And just rewrite this as 2 Al plus 3 I2 to produce 2 Al I3. So now the equation is balanced. We're balancing this equation because we want to find the stoichiometric factor. That is why we're doing this. Now remember they say how many moles of iodine gas are required to react with 0 0.429 moles of aluminium. Now, the solution to the following is we need to find the stoichiometric factor in this. The mole ratio of aluminium uh, with uh, iodine. Now, remember it says how many moles of I2. So, the ratio of uh, iodine to that of aluminium is what? Let's try to check. The ratio is 3 is to 2. I want you to check this. Now, how many moles of I2 are required to react with 0 0.429 moles of aluminium? Right. So the ratio as a reactant, remember. Remember we are looking at moles of a reactant required in a reaction. So the mole ratio of aluminium to iodine, as you can see there, the ratio of iodine to aluminium is 3 is to 2. The small ratio is very, very important. Okay. Now, how do we go about doing this? Now, the first thing that we will do, 
very very important something that is worthy of noting we want the moles of i2 because it says how many moles of i2 are required to react with 0 0.429 moles of aluminium so we are trying to find the moles of i2 so they are equals to what you take the number that is provided which is 0 0.429 moles of aluminium 0 0.429 moles of aluminium and we will go in we are going to multiply that with the mole ratio the mole ratio of iodine to aluminium so you will take the moles of iodine which is a uh, three moles of i2 and you would divide that by two moles of aluminium two moles of aluminium this is exactly what you will do so at all times you have to take that which is uh, unknown equated in this problem you will equate it to whatever moles that are provided i want you to be very very careful here i want you to be careful here we said 0 0.429 moles of aluminium and we multiply that by three moles of i2 divided by two moles of al and where do we get this from the balanced chemical equation so remember we are looking for moles of iodine so that is why we start first with iodine and then aluminium so that is why i'm saying three is to two not two is to three and then from there you take the moles that are provided 0 0.429 moles of aluminium and you multiply them by three moles of i2 you divide them by two moles of al why are you doing that because you want this and this to cancel out that's exactly what you are doing there so that you can only be left with i2 we are requiring the moles of i2 so that is why you have to have your denominator there as al so that the moles and the moles can cancel out so that you can have 0, 0.429 multiply by 3 moles of I2 divided by 2. And let's try and see what value we can get from there. And I think when I do the calculations there, I will get 0 0.644 moles of I2. So 0 0.644 moles of iodine gas are required to react with uh, 0 0.429 moles of aluminium. Alright, uh, there's something worthy of noting here. Something that I want us to look at very thoroughly here. We calculated the moles of iodine gas, which were equals. Now, I want you to check something here. According to a balanced chemical reaction, you require two moles of aluminium to react with three moles of iodine gas to provide you with the two AlI3. Very good. Now, we are therefore saying <clears throat> we don't want three. In fact, we don't want uh, two moles of aluminium. Let me show you this. Let me just zoom back. We don't want two moles of aluminium to react with the three moles of i2 we want to know if we have 0 0.429 moles of aluminium how many moles of i2 would be required to react with 0 0.429 of aluminium and we found the value to be 0 0.644 moles of i2 and i want you to see something here because according to the stoichiometric factors that we have, you require more moles of I2 than you require for AL. That is why if the number here is 0 0.4, you would require more of this. Why do we require more of this? It's because based on the balanced chemical equation, you require more moles of I2 and you require less moles of AL. 
So your answer should make sense in the sense that if this is 0 0.4, you would require less of this and you would require more of this because of the stoichiometric factors that you are dealing with. So if we found a value that was less than 0 0.4, then we would know that this is wrong. Based on the balanced chemical equation, I require more of this than I require more of that. So if I would require 0 0.429 of Al, I should require more of I2 because of the balanced chemical equation. I need three for two of these. Something worthy of noting. Now, once you write down your stoichiometric factor, that is the ratio of moles required for the reactants. Because, remember, the question says how many moles of iodine. Therefore, we start first with iodine. The moles of iodine with respect to the moles of aluminium. This is how we write this. And then from there, this is the unknown. We want the moles of I2. So you would say the moles of I2 required are equals. So how many moles of aluminium are given? 0 0.429 moles of aluminium. Then you multiply this by the stoichiometric factor. This is the same as 3 divided by 2. So 3 moles of I2 based on the balanced chemical equation divided by 2 moles of Al. And then when you do the multiplication here, please be careful. Moles of Al must cancel the moles of Al so that you are only left with I2. This is something worthy of noting. You don't just do things random here as you wish. So the moles of Al cancels the moles of Al because of numerator, denominator, and you will be left with 0 0.429 times 3 moles of I2 divided by 2, which gives you 0 0.644 moles of I2. So we require 0 0.644 moles of I2 to react with 0 0.429 moles of I2 in order to... Uh, produce that which is required something worthy of noting now let's go to the second problem we are going to deal only with two problems that requires the moles of a reactant so let us look at the second problem <clears throat> they say to us how many moles of caoh2 so they want the moles of ca OH2 calcium hydroxide are required to react with 1.36 moles of H3PO4. So we have 1.36 moles of H3PO4 uh, to produce Ca3PO4 uh, according to the uh, equation. So let us write the equation that is provided. So CaOH2 plus H3PO4 react to give us Ca3PO4 plus 6, sorry, plus H2O. This is exactly what we have. And we just need to balance this. So I'm not going to do the balancing. I'm just going to write the numbers as they are given here. Because we already dealt with this. So here we have a 6. And uh, here we have a 2. And here we have a 3. And it is your duty to go back to the tutorials that we had in chemistry. And then just go and check how I have dealt with balancing of chemical reactions. So I'm not going to explain what is happening there. Right, so they say how many moles of CaOH2? So the first thing that we need to, to do here is to understand the question. How many moles of CaOH2? How many moles of this are required to react with 1.36 moles of this? Very good. To produce this. Okay, that is fine according to the reaction. So the first thing that we need to do is to look at the mole ratio. Now remember how many moles of this. So this is the unknown. So the ratio once again here is a 3 
is to 2. That is the mole ratio, the stoichiometric factor that we are looking at. So, what is the second step? So, we will say, okay, um, we are looking for moles of CaOH2. These are the moles that we are uh, requiring. And what are they equals to? So, remember what we do when we are here. We're going to take the moles of H3PO4, which are given as 1.36. So we're going to say 1.36 moles of H3PO4. And what are we going to multiply this with? The stoichiometric factor. This is very, very important. So we're going to multiply this by 3 CaOH2 divided by 2 H3PO4 something worthy of noting now remember this has to cancel with that this is very very important that we understand this and then we will be left with 1.36 um sorry let me just say here uh, a mall very good let me just say here mole very good so this and this would cancel i will be left with 1.36 and i multiply this with a 3 c a o h 2 moles divided by 2 and then what value do we get there so 1.36 times 3 divided by 2 let me just check this very quickly for you very very quickly let's check what value we would get so 1.36 multiplied by the stoichiometric factor of 3 divided by 2 and we would get an answer of 2.04 so that would be the answer for us 2.04 moles so we require 2.04 moles of CaOH2. This would be the answer for us. So let us look again. We require more of uh, CaOH2 to react with less of H3PO4. So if the number here is 1.36, we would expect a bigger value in here. These are some of the little things that you need to be very, very much aware of. Something worthy of noting. Right. Once we are done with that, and I will assume that you understand. Remember here, we're just looking at the moles of the reactant required to react with uh, whatever that is provided so that the outcome can be produced. So we looked at two problems where you are given the moles, the reacted mole of one substance, and we require the reactant mole of another substance. So we looked at two problems of that nature, where you are calculating the number of moles of the reactants. Please be very careful. That was the first part. Now let us go and look at the second part. And in the second part, what is it that we want to do? We want to calculate the number of product molecules generated by a reaction. So in this case, we are therefore saying, all right, uh, calculate for us how many atoms, how many molecules uh, are required in order to produce whatever that needs to be produced. And this brings in Avogadro's number because Avogadro's number, remember, uh, can be able to tell us how many molecules, how many atoms atoms are needed for a certain reaction so this is part two where we will be looking at how to calculate the number of product we looked at the reacted moles now we are looking at the product molecules number of product molecules generated by a reaction so let us look into this now they say in the very first problem how many carbon dioxide molecules are produced when 0.75 moles of propane is combusted to this uh, equation that is provided? So the equation 
is the C3 H8 plus O2. This is a combustion reaction. Uh, it will always and always provide uh, the product of carbon dioxide plus water. Right. And then if we balance this, we would have a 3 there, we would have a 4 there, and we would have a 5 in here. It is entirely your duty to go back into my tutorials and check how the balancing was done. So let us try to look into this. How many carbon dioxide molecules are produced when 0 0.75 moles of propane is combusted according to the equation? So they want the number of... Uh, carbon dioxide molecules we are provided with the number of moles of propane right so we are given 0 0.75 moles of propane this is propane and one thing worthy of noting here again uh, we're going to apply the very same thing that we did in those two uh, previous problems. We need to find the stoichiometric factor. So as you can see here, they say how many uh, carbon dioxide molecules? How many carbon dioxide molecules? Right, so let us look at the mole ratio. 3 is to 1. This is exactly what we have. So why am I saying 3 is to 1, not 1 is to 2? It's because they want carbon dioxide. So I start first with carbon dioxide. The number of moles is 3. And that of propane is 1. So the mole ratio is 3 is to 1. So the question is, how am I going to go about doing this? Now, the first thing that you will do there is we're going to take this number of moles of propane so we're going to say okay um 0 0.75 moles of what of c3 h8 very important and you always know that we're going to multiply by the stoichiometric factors which is a three watt co2 divided by one one watt C3 H8 1 mole of C3 H8 sorry let me just add mole there very very important and because we are looking for the number of molecules therefore you will multiply this by the Avogadro's number which is 6,022 times 10 exponent of 23 uh, CO2. Remember, we are requiring how many carbon dioxide molecules. So let me just say uh, molecules and I will divide this by one mole of CO2. Very, very important. Why am I doing this? Remember what we are doing here. So what we will have in here is the following. That. Right. So this 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 would cancel with this very very important something worthy of noting this would divide would cancel with this as much as this would cancel with this very very important that you note these differences so we will have 0 0.75 multiplied by 3 you can say over one that is your choice and then you multiply this by 6.022 times 10 exponent of 23 molecules very very good something worthy of note so what we need to be left with in here is only this carbon dioxide molecules as you can see this and this cancels this and this cancels something worthy of noting and we are only left with this molecules of co2 and then when you perform your calculations there or you manipulate as you would uh, let us try to see what number we would find uh, we would find a number of 1.4 uh, times 10 to exponent of 24 CO2 molecules 
So if we have 0.75 moles of propane, we would produce 1.4 times 10 exponent of 24 carbon dioxide molecules. This is exactly what would transpire based on the stoichiometric factors of a balanced chemical reaction. So in this case, because we are looking for carbon dioxide molecules, you just take the number that is provided to you, the number of moles of propane, you multiply that by the stoichiometric factor of carbon dioxide is to propane, 3 is to 1, and then you just multiply the rest of this by the Avogadro's number. And then whatever that you get from there will be the number of carbon dioxide molecules needed for 0.75 moles of propane. This is very, very important, wonderful people. Now, let us look at another problem because we will be dealing with the two problems for each. Now, uh, how many NH3 molecules are produced by the reaction of 4.0 moles of CaOH2 according to the reaction? So they want how many uh, molecules of NH3? So NH3 molecules we want to calculate and what is it that we are given we are given four moles of ca so we are given four moles of ca oh2 right okay this is fine and we are also provided with a chemical reaction so nh4 so4 plus ca oh2 uh, react to give us NH3 uh, plus CaSO4 plus 2H2O. So this is the reaction that we have. A balanced chemical reaction. So it is your duty once again to check uh, how this was done. We have already dealt with this. Now let's see what is going to transpire here. They say how many NH3 molecules, NH3 molecules, very good, are produced by the reaction of 4.0 moles of CaOH2. CaOH2. So we are looking for the number of molecules of a product. Right, let us look at the uh, stoichiometric factors there. How many moles of uh, molecules of NH3? So the stoichiometric factor is 2 is to 1. Very, very important based on a balanced chemical uh, equation. So what are we going to do now? We're going to take the moles that are provided to us, which is 4 moles of CaOH2. So you're going to say 4 mole of CaOH2 remember and what is it that we are going to do we are going to multiply this by the stoichiometric factor which is two moles of nh3 divided by one mole of caoh2 and i want you to note here this is very very important that they have to cancel one another and I'm going to multiply this by the Avogadro's number, which is 6.022 times 10 exponent of 23 uh, watt. Remember what they require. How many NH3 molecules? So this will be NH3 uh, molecules. And I'm going to divide this by 1 mole of what? NH3 so that this and this can cancel out. Can you see how lovely chemistry can be? So in here, remember this is one mole of this. So this would cancel with this and we are only left with four. So I'm going to say four times and look here. Mole will cancel with mole. Very good. So I'm going to have a four multiplied by two over one. That's your choice. And I'm going to multiply this by 6.022 times 10 exponent of 23 molecules. And when we multiply all this, 
we should get 4.8 times 10 exponent of 24 NH3. Remember, we have NH3 here. There it is. NH3 molecules. Very good. And we are done. We are very, very much done. So this is the first part of dealing with the stoichiometry. And I'm going to see you in the next part where we will be looking at relating masses of reactants and product. We want to relate those two. The masses of the reactant and the masses of the product. Uh, welcome, welcome wonderful people. This is Mr. Ndabezita again. And remember, we are in the second part of our chemistry where we will look at relating the masses of reactants and products. Very, very important. So let's look at one typical example of such a problem where you will need to make this uh, relation. What mass of sodium hydroxide would be required to produce 16 grams of uh, an end acid milk of magnesia, which is magnesium oxide, by the following provided equation? So I'm not very sure whether you will always be provided with uh, the equation sometimes. You can be given a weird problem where you are required to write your equation and also balance this. Sometimes it can be given to you. you. You'll just have to balance this and be very careful as to the correct way of balancing. So I'm not very sure with this. But we're going to deal with uh, animal science uh, problems because they deal with chemistry. And we will see how the lectures... Uh, approach this in terms of the level of examination so I'm going to show you both ways but not in this tutorial in our subsequent tutorials that we will have so it would be very important for you to share like and subscribe so that you can be notified whenever these things are being dealt with so we are given the following what mass of sodium hydroxide would be required to produce 16 grams of antacid milk of magnesia which is magnesium hydroxide by the following reaction the reaction is provided the reaction is not balanced i'm going to balance this reaction and it is your duty to go and practice how it was done because in the previous tutorials i dealt with um uh net ionic equation where i balance many many sophisticated problems so please go check that tutorial and see how things were done there I think I dealt with more than six problems. I think I dealt with eight problems. So uh, they say uh, what mass of sodium hydroxide would be required to produce 16 grams of antacid milk of magnesia, which is a magnesium hydroxide. So we have magnesium chloride, uh, MgCl2 in aqueous plus uh, sodium hydroxide in an aqueous solution this gives you the milk of magnesia plus sodium chloride which is in an aqueous solution so remember the milk of magnesia it's a solid so if we are to balance this we will have a 2 here and we will have a 2 there and the reaction will be balanced so let me just rewrite this in a nicer way so that we can both see this so we have mg cl2 i'm not going to show the state whether it's in a liquid solid or gas remember this is in an aqueous form i'm trying to uh, use this piece of space that is why plus two sodium hydroxide the milk of magnesia plus sodium chloride so the question is how do we do this well we because we are given the mass they said remember what mass of sodium hydroxide so this we are looking for this one this is the unknown unknown mass that we want what mass of sodium hydroxide would be required to produce 16 grams of milk of magnesia 
so we want the mass of a product this one is provided so we are given the mass of a product we require the mass of a reactant hence i said we will be relating the masses of reactants and products right so uh, this needs to produce 16 grams of uh, magnesium hydroxide so when we are given the mass of this and we require the mass of that we're going to follow the same procedure but because we are dequeen with masses therefore in our stoichiometric factor we also go in to try and deal with a combination of the number of moles together with the masses of uh, these things so uh, how do we do this right the first thing that we will do obviously is to relate the stoichiometric factor in terms of the number of moles when we compare sodium hydroxide with milk of magnesium and we need to find the stoichiometric factor of those two now remember we said what mass of sodium hydroxide so we start first with sodium hydroxide and the mole ratio the stoichiometric factor is 2 is 2 what is the number of moles for milk of magnesium 1 very very important that we understand that first part now that we have been able to find a stoichiometric factor now let's look at the calculation so the first thing that we will always and always do whenever you are given the mass of a product requiring the masses of a reactant the first thing that we do here we take the mass that is provided which is 16 grams of uh mg sorry mg oh2 milk of magnesia that is what it is provided we multiply this by what this is very very important by the stoichiometric factor of magnesium hydroxide remember so we're going to say mg oh2 this is very important this is one mole let me do this one mole of this and we're going to divide this by what now you go and calculate the mass of magnesium hydroxide using the the formula remember number of moles equals mass divided by molar mass so if you want the mass because you have the number of moles of magnesium hydroxide which is one remember it is one so you will say one equals mass divided by the molar mass now remember how you calculated the molar mass you will go to the periodic table let me show you this let me just have a pause and bring in the periodic table for you right um here we are so uh we need to find the molar mass of magnesium hydroxide so you have mg and the molar mass of magnesium is 24 0.31 this is magnesium now check here you have oh so we're going to say plus remember we are adding and we're going to say oxygen uh, the molar mass of oxygen is 16.00 plus that of hydrogen it's 1.008 and remember you have a subscript of two there so you're multiplying this by two very very important and then meaning mass if you do cross multiplication one times m is m and this when you multiply all this let's see what value we would get let me just quickly do that for you and uh, okay let me just press the escape button right let me just quickly go to the numbers so we have 24.3 plus um 16.00 plus 1.008 and I multiply that by 2 and I will get a value of 58 we get mass as 58 
0.316 watt grams so we have now the mass of magnesium hydroxide or the milk of magnesia so now we're going to come here so let me just do this so secondly what we are going to do is the following so here we're going to divide because we have the number of moles of magnesium hydroxide you divide by the mass of magnesium hydroxide which is 58.316 right uh, grams of what magnesium hydroxide very very important and then we also multiply here now you go to the number of moles of uh, sodium hydroxide that is two so you have two moles of NaOH and you divide that by <coughs> one mole of magnesium hydroxide now remember what we are trying to do here we should ensure that we cancel all the magnesium so because I have magnesium hydroxide here as one mole you will divide by one uh, mole also of magnesium hydroxide right and then you will multiply afterwards now you multiply by the mass of sodium hydroxide very important you have the number of moles let me show you this remember the number of moles is mass divided by the molar mass we have the mass based on the stoichiometric factor uh, number of moles as two so we will say two equals mass divided let's go and check the uh, molar mass of sodium hydroxide so let me just come here and check for sodium where is my periodic table here it is let me just zoom in so sodium uh, it's 22.99 plus now remember we are looking for the molar mass of sodium hydroxide so oxygen we know it's 16.00 plus and then we need to have hydrogen hydrogen it's um let me just check first hydrogen we calculate that at as 1.008 very good so meaning mass will be equals to 2 multiplied by all this very very important that we see this now let's check what answer we will find and we have two that multiplies 22.99 plus um 16.00 plus 1.008 1 and we found the value to be 79.996 79 oh what is happening here we have number of oh sorry sorry guys sorry 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 guys now let's check something here remember we said mass is equals to number of moles multiplied by the molar mass that is what we said and this would be uh the molar mass 22.99 plus 16.00 plus 1.008 we are looking for the mass so we have to say this multiplied by that so what value do we get there it seems to have a very very big value so let's check this um, let's just quickly check something here um so uh when we multiply here 
the value here becomes 39.998 grams per mole because these are this is a molar mass so when you multiply this based on the stoichiometric factor of sodium hydroxide we will find a value of approximately 80 this should be 80 grams right why because remember you have number of moles equals mass divided by the molar mass so number of moles is 2 mole you may have mass you have grams per mole and this would cancel with that you are left with the grams and this is over one when you multiply this would be two multiply by your molar mass which is uh, approximately 40 and that should give you 80 grams based on the stoichiometric numbers that we have please and also based on a balanced chemical equation if i need then uh, the molar mass of sodium hydroxide i'm provided with number of moles which is two so in order to find the mass i need to say number of moles multiplied by the molar mass so we get this value of 80 grams so when you multiply in here please be very careful uh, let me just do this right so when we are in here we are going to multiply by that we're going to multiply by uh, 80 we're going to multiply by 80 grams of sodium hydroxide divided by what divided by the moles of uh, sodium hydroxide divided by the mole of sodium hydroxide now let's check something uh, you have uh, this cancelling with this very good you have this cancelling with this very good you have this cancelling with this and you're only left with that so let's just try to rewrite this so meaning you are left with 16 multiplied by 1 over 58.316 multiplied by 2 over 1 multiplied by 80 grams of sodium hydroxide divided by 1 and if we plug this on the calculator let's see the number that comes out so 16 multiplied by 1 over 58 point 316 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 80 and you will get 43 point 0.898 grams of sodium hydroxide now let me take your mind back remember it is very very dangerous in here remember what we are given the mole ratio is 2 is to 1 and they are saying 16 grams of magnesium oxide are provided how many grams of sodium hydroxide are required so in this problem you cannot find the mass of sodium hydroxide using the mole ratio because that would give you the exact number of mass that is required if there's only one mole of what? One mole of uh, magnesium hydroxide. Please be mindful, even though in here, look what we have done. We said 1 equals mass divided by this. And when we multiplied this by 1, this is the number, the correct number that we got. However, whenever you are calculating the mass in here, you cannot use two moles. 
because that two moles is the exact number of moles that are required. And in here, you would argue and say, but Mr. Ndabezita, you have used one mole in order to find the mass of milk of magnesia. And that one was from the mole ratio. So why are you denying the fact that we should also use these two moles in order to find the molar mass of sodium hydroxide? So even though this is true, as long as the number of moles is one, we cannot use that one. Why? Because look here. Look here what is happening here. You have in here, I want to draw your attention here. Look, you have two moles of sodium hydroxide. And look here, you don't have two, but you have one mole of what? Sodium hydroxide. So because in here the division number is one mole, therefore you cannot use two moles here. Because this 80 grams would be the exact value, but because the mole there is one, not two, hence two is not considering two in here, we are using that two as a stoichiometric factor, but when we calculate the molar mass, we are using the number of moles, which appears here as one something very very important so when we calculate the mass of sodium hydroxide do not use the number of moles as two but use as one because it is one mole of what now because we have one mole of sodium hydroxide now let me show you something even when it comes to the milk of magnesia here look what is happening here you have one mole of magnesium hydroxide. You have one mole of magnesium hydroxide. If it was a three here and the number was one there, I wasn't going to use a three here. I was going to use a one. Please try to see this wonderful people, I beg you. If the division number of mole is one, that's exactly what you use when you calculate the number of moles there. You will find the mass by using one mole because the division number is one mole, even though the number will be three there. Remember that three comes from a stoichiometric factor. And that one there is the number of moles that you would use to find the mass. So please, in here, this two is a stoichiometric factor of multiplication but because the number of moles there is one that's exactly what you use here in order to find the mass so when we redo this we're not going to multiply by two but by one leaving you with only this so you will have a mass of 40 grams let's try to correct this something worthy of noting very much worthy of noting so meaning let's redo this calculation and just say 16 multiplied by 1 divided by 58.316 multiplied by 2 over 1 the stoichiometric factor multiply by 40 grams of sodium hydroxide over 1 and let's see what that would provide to us so let me just uh, correct this and use a 40 then. And we would get, uh, let me see what value we get, 21.949. We would get 21.949 grams of sodium uh, hydroxide which if we round off to a whole number it will be 22 grams of sodium hydroxide so if you have 16 grams of milk of magnesia based on the stoichiometric factor of a balanced equation you would require 22 grams of sodium hydroxide in order to give you a product of 16 and why is this number bigger it's because of the stoichiometric factor we require more of sodium hydroxide than we require for the milk of magnesium therefore we will we will expect more mass 
of what of sodium hydroxide and lesser mass for magnesium uh, for milk of magnesium something worthy of noting guys i wanted us to do this so that you can see the differences and why things have to be the way in which they are something worthy of noting let's go to the second problem and see how this unfolds right uh wonderful people let us try to look at the second approach of the very same problem where we uh, relate the masses of reactants with the products the masses of those two now remember we said magnesium chloride which is in an aqueous solution plus 2na oh sodium hydroxide also in an aqueous solution they react to give magnesium hydroxide or the milk of magnesia which is a solid plus two sodium chloride in an aqueous solution now they said what mass of sodium hydroxide so this is the unknown What mass of sodium hydroxide would be required to produce 16 grams of milk of magnesium? So we're given the mass here. 16 grams. Right. And that is fine. And then, um, according to this balanced chemical reaction. So, okay, that is fine. So, the first thing that we always do is to check the molar ratio. We have two. Remember, we start first with the unknown is to one. Now, in the second approach, what we're going to do, because we are given 16 grams of uh, milk of magnesia. This is what is given. We're going to calculate the number of moles of milk of magnesium using the formula. Let me just do this. Number of moles equals mass divided by the molar mass. So we have mass that is 16 grams. We're going to divide it by the molar mass of magnesium hydroxide. So I'm going to go to the periodic table. Right, so I'm going to look for magnesia, which is 24.31 plus oxygen plus hydrogen. Oxygen is uh, 16. So let's just say 16 plus hydrogen is 1. Okay, let me just do this. Let me just go a little bit up. Let me just do this. Yes. So we have hydrogen with uh, one. But remember all this. This has to be multiplied by two. Because of the subscript today. Very important. And let's see what the numbers will provide for us. So if I go to my calculator... And I say 16 divided by 24.31 plus 16 plus 1 is 17 multiplied by 2. I will get a value of uh, 0 0.27. 0 0.27439 let's just take uh, five digits after uh, the comma that we have there right this would be the number of moles for the milk of magnesium right <clears throat> now let's check I require two moles of sodium hydroxide I require two moles of sodium hydroxide for every one mole of magnesium. So if I require one for magnesia 
and I required two. So in order to find the number of moles required for 16 grams of magnesium hydroxide, I'm going to multiply this by two because the number of moles have to be two times when it comes to sodium hydroxide. So do not round this off. Just write it as you have it on your calculator and just multiply this by two in order to find the number of moles of sodium hydroxide. Very, very important. <clears throat> so I'm just going to go to my calculator in here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, okay, um, answer multiplied by two and I will get a value of 0 0.5487 so number of moles of sodium hydroxide it's 0 0.54879 I'm going to take just five digits more right so now I can be able to calculate the mass of sodium hydroxide needed for 16 grams of magnesium hydroxide or the milk of magnesium. So number of moles equals mass divided by the molar mass. I have number of moles which is 0 0.54879. I'm looking for the mass. I can find the molar mass of sodium hydroxide. So for sodium hydroxide, I, I know that sodium is 22.99 plus, remember that sodium hydrogen is 16 plus hydrogen is 1. And what I'm going to do here is to cross multiply. This times this is mass, therefore I'm taking this and multiplying with the whole of this. So this is how you can do it. You can say 0 0.54. 879 multiply you just make a bracket 22.99 plus 16 plus 1 and then you just insert this on your calculator and we should find the same answer as we did previously so i'm just going to say answer multiplied open the bracket 22.99 plus 16 plus 1 it's 70 and I get a value of 21 point oh sorry what is this now equals okay there seems to be a problem uh, we said 0 0.54879 open bracket 22.99 plus 17 and I got 21.946 21.946 which is uh, if we round off this to a whole number it will give you 22 grams of sodium hydroxide all right, uh, wonderful people, let's go and look at the second problem. Now they say, what mass of gallium oxide uh, can be prepared from 29.0 grams of gallium metal based on the reaction? So we have 4 Ga plus 3 O2 to provide us with the 2 Ga2O3. Now, what is it that we are given? What mass of gallium oxide? So this is the unknown. And this is given. Right. Let us look at the stoichiometric factor, which is 2. We always start with the unknown. 2 is to 4, which we can divide both sides by 2. And we will get 1 is to 2. Now, don't forget this is gallium oxide and this is gallium. Right. Now, we are given 29 grams of gallium metal. So, we can find the number of moles of the gallium metal. Number of moles, mass divided by the molar mass. We are given 29 grams. 
we can find the um, molar mass of uh, gallium. I think the molar mass of gallium is... Uh, let me check. The molar mass of gallium is 69.72. And that is 69.72 grams per mole and the gram will cancel with the gram what is 29 what is 29 divided by 69.72 and we find a value of 0 0.4 159 moles what are the moles these are the moles of uh, gallium but we need to find the moles of gallium oxide now we check based on the stoichiometric factor of 1 is to 2 so meaning I require 2 moles of gallium for every 1 mole of gallium oxide so I require less of this. So because I have this, I need to go and divide this by 2. This is very important. I require less of gallium oxide and more of gallium. So because these are the moles of gallium, I'm going to divide them by 2. And now we can find the number of moles of gallium oxide. So let's just go and say uh, answer divided by 2 and you will find 0 0.2079 0 0.2079 7 moles and what are these moles they are the moles of gallium oxide now we can find the mass because we have the number of moles so number of moles mass divided by molar mass 0 0.20797 equals mass divided by the molar mass of gallium oxide. I already know uh, gallium is 69.72, but remember how many galliums? Two of them. So I'm just going to multiply by two. Plus oxygen is 16. But how many do I require? Three of them. Very good. Divided by one. Cross multiply. Mass equals 0 0.20797 into 69.72 times 2. 16 times 3. Let's see what answer we will get. So I'm just going to say answer, which is equals to this. So I'm just going to say answer into 69.72. I'm going to multiply this by 2 plus 16 times 3. And the answer you will find there, it's 38.9827 grams, which if you write as a whole number, it will be 39 grams of gallium oxide. And you are done. Good morning, wonderful people. Uh, I think we need to... Uh, just try to wrap up stoichiometry so that we can move on to something else so let me let me just do this very quickly so that um, we can work on <clears throat> something else let me just see how far we went okay i just need to go here do this uh, go in here and find our chemistry textbook and exactly this is where we were so in the previous example 
uh, we looked at um, I think we left off where we calculated uh, I'm not very sure uh, I think uh, a gallium oxide yes so let me go to the second one relating the masses of reactants and let's now look at another problem I'm trying to give you as many problems as we should so that you 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 truly understand what is happening here so they say in 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 this problem what mass of oxygen gas from the air is consumed in the combustion of 702 grams of octane which is uh, one of the principal components of uh, gasoline so we have 2 C8H18 for those who studied uh, organic chemistry they know this they are hydrocarbons 25 O2 16 carbon dioxide plus 18 H2O uh, this is a combustion reaction so they say what mass of oxygen gas so this this is the unknown uh what mass of oxygen gas from the air is consumed in the combustion of uh octane which is this so this is given in terms of mass we have the mass and the equation is given and it is already balanced and you know how to balance a chemical reaction if you have watched my video on uh net ionic equations right so what we are going to do in here we're going to use uh two methods of approach uh, the first one being okay um, we're going to say all right uh, we have uh, 702 grams of C8 H18 this is given and we are looking for the mass uh, of O2 which is an unknown so what we can do in the first method we can take let me just do this let me show you this um we can take okay let's look first at the mole ratio of uh octane and oxygen gas uh the mole ratio is remember we always start with the unknown 25 is 2 2 this is the mole ratio so we can say 702 grams of c8 h18 and we can multiply this by one mole of c8 h18 and we can divide this by the mass of uh, octane so how do we find the mass of octane now let's check something right according to the mole uh, ratio we have two moles of c8 h18 very important so we can say the number of moles equals mass divided by the molar mass and if you take 2 as the number of moles and you say mass divided by the molar mass of carbon I know it's 12 so you're going to say 12 times 8 and hydrogen is 1 you're going to say 1 times 18 and if you cross multiply in here you will have the mass that is equals to 2 into 12 times 8 plus 1 times 18 and let's just quickly check what the value we would find there let's just quickly do this so we're just saying okay uh, we have uh, 2 uh, into 12 times 8 
plus 1 times 18, which is 18, and you will get 228 grams <clears throat> of octane. If you have, if you have two moles based on a balanced chemical equation, right? But because we said in here one mole of octane, you can't use two here. You need to use <clears throat> the number of moles as one. So I wanted you to see that. So let's replace this with a 1 here. And see what answer we will get. So I'm just going to say uh, 12 times 8 plus 18. Because 1 times 18, it's 18. And you get 114. 114 grams of octane. So please, you don't use the number of moles which you find on your stoichiometric factor. No, you use one mole. Why? Because you said you're going to multiply by one mole of C8H18. You always say that. It's very, very important that you know this. You always say that. You don't calculate the mass in here based on the stoichiometric factor. No, <clears throat> you will always say one mole highly important so the mass there will be 114 so let me just do this you will always and always say that so you will say 114 so we're going to multiply here by 114 grams of c8 h18 right and then from there you multiply by the stoichiometric factor very very important here and one thing worthy of noting one thing worthy of noting here is that when you take the mass that is provided of the known uh, reactant you must always multiply by one mole divided by the molar mass in this problem when masses are given and then here you multiply by the stoichiometric factor. You start first with the unknown, which is 25 moles of O2. Then you divide by the number of moles of the given mass, 2C8H18. And then from there, you will multiply by the molar mass of the unknown sorry by the mass of the unknown you go and calculate the mass of oxygen gas now for how many moles <clears throat> you will always use one mole so what you're going to say you're going to say okay number of moles equals mass divided by the molar mass just as we used one mole to calculate the mass of uh, octane you're also going to do the same for the mass of oxygen so you're going to say 1 equals mass divided by the molar mass. And remember oxygen is 16. And then remember you have O2. So 16 times 2 is 32. Which will give you the mass of 32 grams of O2. So you're going to multiply here by 32 grams of O2. Very important. And you will divide by 1 mole of oxygen. Guess very very important today now look what happens here this will cancel with this please i'm not canceling the numbers today i'm just canceling gram c8 h18 gram c8 h18 this will cancel with that this is very important we have dealt with this the mole will cancel with the mole and look at what you are left with 702 multiplied by 1 over 114 multiplied by 25 divided by 2 multiplied by 32 grams of O2. Something worthy of noting. 
worthy beyond the stars themselves now let's try and check what value we would get here let me just do this very quickly 702 I'm going to multiply this by 1 divide this by 114 and I will multiply this by 25 divided by 2 and I'm going to multiply this by 32 grams and I get a value of 2463.15789 grams of O2 which I can try and write uh, in exponential form and in exponential form, this will be 2.46 times 10 to the exponent of 3 grams of O2. This is very, very important. Highly and highly important. So this would be the number uh, that we get. Let me just do this. Uh mode scientific I would just say 9 and we having exactly that so let's go on to something else let's try to look at the second approach now this is the first method it seems a little bit easier to use this one but you will see which one you prefer so let's try to check the second method we have two C8H18 2502 16CO2 plus 18H2O we have 702 grams of C8H18 we have the unknown grams of O2 very good so what is it that we want to do here now, because we are provided with the mass of C8H18, we can find the number of moles for this. Because number of moles equals mass divided by the molar mass. We can take this 702 grams. The molar mass, we have already dealt with that. And the value that we got, what was the value of C8H18? Let me check first. I think it was 140 grams per mole remember those are the SI units for molar mass grams per mole gram will cancel with a gram we are left with 702 uh, sorry 702 divided by 114 and this will be in moles and let's see the number of moles that we get so we're just going to say 702 divide that by 114 and we would find a value of 6 6.15789 moles moles of octane right now we go to the stoichiometric factor which is 25 is to 2 and remember this is oxygen and this is octane now we want to know I know for two moles of C8H18 I need 25 moles of O2 now the confusion now comes here do I multiply by 25 or what is it that I do when the number here it's not one what you need to do is to multiply both sides by this by the reciprocal of this number so that it can end up as one what do i mean by that you multiply by one half you multiply by one half this will give you 25 over 2 of o2 is to 1 of c8h18 now that tells you for one mole of c8h18 i will need 25 divided by 2 of o2 so in order to find the number of moles of oxygen gas you multiply these moles by 25 divided by 2 
this is very very important and that would give you the number of moles of oxygen gas required so i'm just going to come here i'm going to say answer multiply this by 25 over 2 and you would get 76 76.97368 uh, moles of O2. So if we require 6.15789 moles of this, then you would require this for oxygen gas. Now you can say number of moles equals mass divided by the molar mass. This is E equals to mass. Now, what is the molar mass now of oxygen gas? That would be 32. Because you have 16 times 2, which is 32. Then you can cross multiply. The mass is 32 times 76.97368. Don't round off like me. Just go to your calculator and say answer multiplied by this so that you do not uh, get an answer that is not closer to the answer that I will find. And we find the answer to be 2,463.15789 grams of O2 which can be 2.46 times 10 exponent to 3 grams of O2. This is exactly what we would get. And it is the same answer as we got for the previous one. So this is stoichiometry. Very simple to know and understand. It just requires more time. Be that as it may, let's go to another problem. And in here, what is it we have? We have uh, something very, very important. They say, but I believe the same procedure would be employed also in here. So they say to us, what mass of carbon monoxide is required to react with 25.13 grams of iron oxide according to the equation? So the equation is Fe2O3, 3CO, uh, one-way reaction, twice Fe plus 3CO2. Okay, this is the reaction that we have. Let's try to write down the data. So we have 25.13 grams of Fe2O3. So this is given... Right, um, and what is it that is required? CO. This is the unknown. So we are still looking at the masses of reactants. What mass of CO is required to react with 25.13 grams of Fe2O3? Let's look if it is balanced. Yes, yes. Six, six. Very good. So when we are in here, um, we can use the very same approach as we did previously. We can say 25.13 grams of Fe2O3 and we can multiply this by one mole of Fe2O3 and we can divide by the mass of one mole of Fe2O3 which we can calculate we can just come here and say one equals mass uh, that's what we want divided by the molar mass of this so let me just go and check i so i can just go to the uh, periodic table where is this period of tables let me just look into this the periodic table so let me just do this very quickly. I just want to find a periodic table and see what Dimitri Mendeleev has for us. Now, let me just come here. 
and check something right so we need to find remember this is fe2 so we need to find ein and multiply it by 2 so let me look for fe it's 55.85 55.85 times 2 plus I have oxygen how many three of them 16 times 3 very good now let's see uh, what the mass would be there so I'm going to just cross multiply the mass will be this so again I just rush as quickly as I can just to say 55.85 this is being multiplied by 2 added to the multiplication of 16 times 3. And I would get a value of 159.7 grams of Fe2O3. So that's what I'm going to take and divide by in here. So 159.7 grams of Fe2O3. And then secondly, what is it that I do? Let me just go back to the problem. Um, what has transpired here? Okay, let me check this. Let's just wait for the computer to load up. There it is. So when I'm here, I'm going to multiply this now by the stoichiometric factor. Now remember the stoichiometric factor. Remember we always start with the unknown. So it will be 3 is 2, 1. Very important. So what is it that I take there? I take that of the unknown. Remember at all times. So I'm going to say 3... CO 3 moles of CO and I'm going to divide that by 1 mole of Fe2O3 and I'm going to multiply this by the mass of the unknown and I need to calculate that remember we always use 1 mole 1 equals mass divided by the molar mass and uh, this is carbon monoxide so carbon it's 12 oxygen it's 16 and I can say in here the mass is equals to 28 grams of carbon monoxide so I can multiply here by 28 grams of carbon monoxide divided by one mole of carbon monoxide something worthy of noting these are the lectures of papa fanzo all right when we are here look what transpires this cancels with this and this cancels with that and this cancels with this and look at what we are left with 25 0.13 1 divided by 159.7 multiplied by 3 over 1 multiplied by 28 grams of carbon monoxide let's see what the computation will give us so 25 point one three multiply this by 1 divide by 159.7 multiply by the stoichiometric factor and lastly multiply this by the mass of carbon monoxide and we will get 13 point Two, two grams of carbon monoxide this is fantastic very good sweet like mama jerry coco right uh, let us continue so this was the first method
It seems very straightforward to me, very fast. You can make a mistake on this, but there is another way. So the second method would be, okay, we have uh, Fe203, 3 carbon monoxide, twice iron, 3 carbon monoxide. And what we can do, we are given 25.13 grams of ion oxide. So I can find the number of moles required to produce 25.13 grams of iron oxide. Number of moles, mass, uh, the molar mass, this is very good. 25.13 grams of Fe2O3. The molar mass, I think I've already dealt with that. We found it to be... Uh, if I am correct, yes, that was uh, 159.7 grams. So we have 159.7 grams per mole. Remember, per mole of Fe2O3. Grams will go with the grams and this will go with that. And we will have 25.13 uh, mole divided by 159.7 and what value do we get so we're just going to say we're just going to say 25.13 and we divide this by 159.7 and we will find a value of um okay let me just do this let me just do this uh to the normal mode uh one will do just fine we will get 0 0.1574 grams of iron 2 oxide so this is what we get right if this is what we get now we need to go and consult the stoichiometric factor which is 3 is to 1 and remember 3 this is Fe2O3 and this is carbon monoxide so now look into this we require one mole of carbon monoxide for every three moles of Fe2O3. So we require more of this and less of that. So if these are the number of moles of Fe2O3, then we need to divide this by three in order to get that because we require less of this. So this is more, we need to make it less so we divide by 3 and because the ratio is 3 is to 1 so the number of moles of carbon monoxide 0 0.1574 grams sorry moles here I'm very sorry this is more very very sorry so this is more I'm very sorry and then we're going to divide this jesus my father and my god we divide this by three so you just go here and you say answer divide this answer by three and we would get 0 0.05 we require 0 0.05 uh, moles of carbon monoxide now we can calculate the mass number of moles mass by the molar mass 0 0.05 mass i know uh the molar mass of carbon monoxide is 12 plus 16 which is 28 and then the mass will be 28 times 0 0.05 let's see what value we would get so i just say answer multiplied by 28 and we get uh, there seems to be some problem here uh, let me check 0 0.05 um, 
multiplied by 28 i i get 1.4 this is this is this is hilarious uh let's see what has transpired here let's let's check something here i require one mole of carbon monoxide for every three moles of iron oxide so here i have the moles of iron oxide and i require one of this so let me see this i require less of this Hence, I'm dividing this by 3. Mm. And now it is giving me a wrong answer. Okay, let me just do this. <laughs> let me do this. Let me say um, 0 0.15... Seven four times three, and I will get this, and I'm going to multiply this by um twenty eight. Okay, no, we don't have to divide here. Please be careful. We require uh less of this and more of that so we don't divide here we multiply please let's correct that we need to multiply here we need to multiply there please this is very very important and then when we come here let me show you this so when we say uh zero point one five seven four let's multiply this by three we get zero zero point four seven two two moles of carbon monoxide so that when we are in here we can say 0 0.4722 mass divided by 28. 28 times 0 0.4722. We get. We will find 28 times 0 0.4. 722 we get a value of 13.22 13.22 grams of carbon monoxide now let's get back here we found the number of moles as this for iron 2 oxide that is fine now what we know is the stoichiometric factor jesus Oh, living people, why are you not showing me this? Look what is happening here. I require more of this. Ish, I made a very serious mistake here. I'm very sorry, wonderful people. Please forgive me. Look, we require more of carbon monoxide and less of iron oxide. So when we are here, we must multiply by three because we require more of this and less of that. I'm very sorry guys I'm very very sorry for that I'm very sorry honestly so you see the mistake that I've done you see I said three of this and one of that hence I divided I'm sorry I I am very sorry for that this is for CO and this is for Fe203 I'm very very sorry for that please forgive me so we must multiply because we require more of this and less of that. I'm very sorry. Please mistakes do happen. Please be on the watch out next time to correct me when these things transpires. Right. Uh, that is all.
that is all that I wanted to share with you uh, wonderful people uh, I think I will see you again in the next tutorial because we have completed stoichiometry I think you have understood I think you have grasped the content of Papa Fanzo please do like share and subscribe or leave my whatsapp numbers for you guys in order to create our group and we can enjoy chemistry as a whole